Oh, it feels good to be back. Oh, it feels so good to be back playing the game I actually signed up to play, where I have to crouch walk everywhere I go because I'm petrified of the alien jumping down on me and from any given position at any given time. That might sound sarcastic, but it's really not. I, I, I signed up to this game knowing ex exactly what I was signing myself up for, exactly how terrifying and arduous it was going to be. And I was fully game for it. I was 100% willing to commit... Did a bear just yawn? To commit myself to such a task. And, uh, said task was taken away from me about halfway through this game, so I'm glad to have it back. I am very, very glad to have it back now. But that also means I'm on edge a lot more so than I was before. Oh, wait, this was blocked with an iron torch before, right? Yeah, okay. I mean, it makes sense that we are backtracking our way through the earlier parts of the game. Because I did see all these... I did see all these things earlier, like, use the ion torch, use the plasma torch, and I'm like, I don't have any of those things, what are you talking about? So it would have been, would have been strange if we never actually got a chance to use those things at any point. But at the same time, it's hard to, I, I can't, even though I am very happy that the alien is back, it's kind of hard to shake the feeling that it's like, are we just, are we just dicking around now? We're just backtracking through a bunch of different locations for... No real reason other than to just artificially kind of extend how long the game lasts. So I can't help but feel like that's kind of the vibe we're going for here. But I certainly... I did and didn't miss those noises. Because, like, that's, that's the thing. It's not... It's not just that the, that the Xenomorph is such a cool enemy design. It's, it's, it's not like a superficial, like, oh, I like aliens, I don't like boring androids. I mean, that is part of it. It is kind of hard, because, like, it's sort of similar to what happened with uh, enemies in the Halo games, where for Halo 1 through Reach, your enemy was the Covenant, which were organic life forms that had personality, and oh my god, everything's on fire. Oh, right, right, yeah, this is... Ah, what fond memories I have. Of the medical bay. Remember when we came here and we met up with the, and the alien just jumped on us from out of nowhere and tried to kill us, but then we were bailed out by a random explosion? Oh, what fond memories we made here in the medical bay. This is where we met that guy who said, Don't worry, it's safe. I'll I'll go down with you to the basement and lured us right into a trap knowing that the xenomorph was here ready to eat us. Remember when we had to stealth our way through, I think, this specific part? Yeah, this is all coming back to... I, I was beating my head against the wall with this section trying to navigate my way around the humans. There was a room in there with the central console thing that we had to interact with to cause the place to go on lockdown. And oh look, this is probably one of the assholes that was fucking with me while I was sneaking around these these parts. Well, the good news is they're probably all dead now, so I shouldn't have to worry about... Oh no, not this again. Oh no, fuck you. Okay. Let's hope that was just a one-off. It was doing the thing again where my controls just didn't go the way I wanted them to go, and it was pulling me back for- Oh, this- this can't be a regular thing. I'm gonna need you to stop doing that. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway. Oh, you've gotta be fucking kidding me. Can I go anywhere? Without having to deal with you fucking assholes? And of course they all have hazmat suits on, because of course they do. Which means I can't use the EMP mine on them, and it also means I can't use the stun batons on them. Why does this game fucking hate me? We can't have- this is why we can't have nice things. We can't just face off against an- and of course, of course this door is fucking locked. Oh, and I can't go that way, I hate- I hate them so much. Alright, let's just- play ring around the rosy then I'll, I'll loop him around this side and then I'll go behind him I'm going to catch you and I go nah okay you're just gonna be a dick about it huh well how about I get you all the way down here and then I go this way how about are you fucking kidding me I hate you so much 
I, I fucking despise this enemy. It's such a stupid fuck. This is futile. And I can't run because it'll cause the goddamn alien to spawn. Not that it matters because you're here. I'm genuinely so sick of the fucking androids. They're so not fun. They're not fun to deal with. Nothing about them is engaging or fun or- it's just- I hate it so much. He's- is he- he's facing this way. Can he not face this way? Is he ever gonna turn the other way or is he just gonna- is he permanently positioned? He's just permanently fucking sitting there. Okay, let's try to lose him in here, I guess. Oh, right. Oh, I remember this. Oh, yeah, this is... Good thing I'm not running then, I guess. Let's hope this goes all the way around. I don't actually remember if it goes all the way around in a circle, but I remember dro I dropped down into that room. I tried to hide in there and got caught by the alien. Let's turn this off in case that's gonna alert into my presence somehow. Okay, I think we, I think we outwitted him. I think we lost him. Let's hope there's not another one. That'd be real annoying if there was just another one hiding somewhere. Anyway, in Halo 1 through Reach, the enemies were all organic life forms that had clear personality, so that they felt alive. They were, they, that's a huge reason why people liked fighting the Covenant so much. And then in Halo 4 and 5, they introduced the Prometheans, which aren't really that interesting because they're just orange or blue robots that have no personality so they're really uninteresting to fight and it's kind of the same thing here it's like the xenomorph feels it doesn't feel like a, a model that's running off predetermined ai programming it feels like a living breathing creature that wants to kill you anything of interest in here audio log i'll tell the report not really what we're looking for. The androids, meanwhile, feel about as inorganic as possible. So they're really boring to deal with. It doesn't help that their actual mechanics are annoying as shit. So, just loss all around, really. Is this the room you wanted me to go in? No, there's something, okay, there's more. Wait, it, what, this is, we gotta go a little bit further. No androids? No androids. Nothing, there's nothing on the motion tracker. Oh, and of course, I should have I should have I seen this coming. The way we had to go the entire time was was the plant room area, which on, right on the other side of that door was where we first entered the, this section from. But of course, the door was blocked off because, you know, that would make things too easy if we could just go straight here. Any friends? No friends. We like having no friends. Flashbang uh, blueprint. Always nice. Stun baton charge. It doesn't really help. Like, I tried to stun the guy with the... I tried to stun the android that had the hazmat suit on, but it didn't work. It seems like I can't... You can't. You just can't stun them when they have those on. The only... The only consistently effective way of dealing with them is the bolt gun, for which I'm pretty sure I'm out of ammo entirely. Yeah, I don't think I have any more ammo for the bolt gun. Okay, hack the door to what? Uh, oh, boy, the shuttle. The shuttle to... Tower Link? I guess? Or maybe that one over there. I hear the alien stomping around. Yeah, it's... it's the sound design is such a huge part of what makes this work. Like, the, the, the fact... Huh? What? The knowledge that the alien is always stalking you, everywhere you go, in every single room he, that it could decide to jump on you, is... Like that, for instance! Okay, really? Like that, for instance. Just, you know spitballing here like you literally come around the corner and he's looking at you i really love how the alien can jump on you whatever and you can always hear it clamoring around the vents so you never feel fully safe as i say that what happens it just 
comes through the damn door. I was hoping maybe the sound of the door opening was gonna be the android so I could ring around the rosy yet again. It was not. It was the alien. It was indeed the alien. I can still hear it clamoring around the vents. Okay, come on. Come on. Get in. I'm running the Ceridian assistant. Just punch the dash. What about you? Sneak on here with me like it did in the first movie. I get the feeling I wasn't supposed to see that. I, I get the feeling I'm not supposed to. Hmm. All right. I'll, I'll 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 play along. I won't look behind me because clearly the game doesn't want me to look. I don't think I was supposed to see the light flying across the uh, flying across the shuttle. Oh well. Okay. I need I need to stop looking around while Ripley's moving. That's incredibly disorienting. Well, we, uh... Ricardo, can you hear me? One would think that shuttling off to a different part of the station would, uh, put some significant level of distance between me and the alien, but, uh... Guessing that, uh, guessing that probably didn't, uh, happen. Also, that kind of looks like, that kind of looks like the shape of a xenomorph. That, that little series of tubes and wires there. Alright, bring the needs to door systems back online. Sounds simple enough. How hard could it be? I'm not at all creeped out by the fact that there's almost no lighting anywhere in here. Forty five tends to code for something. We're outside Sebastopol. Marlow and Foster woke up first. She looked terrible. Meeks and me are about to take a shuttle to the station. But well, this is That's not one of the quarantine procedures, right? It's Marlow's ship. She's Marlow's wife. And things got heated, and Meeks got a bloody nose. So, I don't know. Maybe the doctors will give her the all clear and things can get to normal. But if they sniff it out when we get on board, I don't want any part of it. Marlo doesn't pay nearly enough for that kind of noise. I never like using these. Just because of the sheer amount of noise that they make. But, you gotta do it. You gotta get the job done. One way or another. Just mash A as fast as you can and hope that nothing gets you killed. Is that the only two, or are there more on the side? Looks like those are the only two. All right, is that enough to get the systems back online, or do we still got more, more crap to do? I'm guessing it's not going to be that easy. As long as, as long as there's nothing on the motion tracker, I'm not worried. It's going to send me through this door at some point. Oh, new console. Shiny. Uh oh. Oh, this again. I'm always very confused by how it decides what, when to give me which mini games. But I welcome the variety. I will say I kind of wish there was more, because that was one of the things that I appreciated really early on in the game was the fact that there was more than just that one match the symbols mini game. But it's really been mainly just that, 
and very little instances where they changed it up on me. They have changed it up, which is appreciated, Picardia, but I just wish they did that more. Got the Invincible's basic power systems back online. Doors should be open. Hopefully some light. Still no sign of Martin. Hey, Ripley. Welcome to the Anisadora. Marlo? Where are you, Marlo? Thanks for switching the power back on. You saved me a job. I only needed it offline temporarily. I had some things to fix. We may have broken our losing streak. We've barely been scraping what? the Oh, I went backwards. Oh shit. Oops. Well, I didn't realize I was I was going backwards. I didn't realize that, that was the audio log I already played. Oops. I, I was sitting there next to it because I didn't want to start playing it while Marlo was having his little villain monologue. Uh, not aware of the fact that I actually went backwards and that was the one that I had already uh, played for you guys. I think I'll pass. Taylor? Taylor! Marlo, what are you doing? Uh, I, I I don't want to say the facehuggers scare me more than the the xenomorph, but like maybe they do. I'm not sure. Just, I think it's because they're a lot more somehow. I mean, the xenomorph is already fast as, as lightning, but somehow these things are even more mobile because they're smaller. They're more nimble, and also they're not as obvious. That's that's the other thing. Like the xenomorph, you can't miss. You cannot miss the Xenomorph, but those guys, there could be a million of those things buried among the boxes here, and you'd never know until it was too late. That, I think, might be the thing that's, uh, most terrifying. Always check the terminal, never know what you're gonna find. Gonna find a whole lot of nothing, except another audio log. Anisadora, this is Marshal Waits of Sebastopol. Officially, I should deny your request to dock. Sebastopol is currently being decommissioned, and I can't compromise security for unscheduled vessels. However, in the light of the property you found, I will allow a small number of your crew to dock via a short-range shuttle. I must remind you that Sebastopol is entitled to a cut of any reward for return of said property once it's on station. Let me know your decision. Wait's up. I really thought the flashlight was going to be more important in this game. Like, right here, this seems like a prime opportunity to make me use the flashlight and really limit my the amount of light that I'm exposed to so that when something jumps out of me, it really increases the effect. But every time I walk into a dark hallway like this, the light's always... come back on again. But see, then it's accompanied by that little mini earthquake right there, or space quake, and suddenly I don't, uh... Don't feel so I confident. Brought him to Sebastopol. Broke all the rules, getting her ashore. That was stupid of me. Stupid. You don't beat this thing, Ripley. You can't. All you can do is refuse to engage. You gotta wipe out every trace, destroy any clue, stop its infection from spreading. Make sure there's no chance of the human race ever making contact with it again. Because the moment it makes contact, it's won. The company's never gonna know what happened here. Nobody is. You know, the idea of, you know, never making contact with the Xenomorphs ever again sounds good on paper. You might want to tell Wailing Yutani, I'm going to get it through their heads, that continually endangering people... Big. We don't, we don't like big holes in the ceilings. Continually endangering people because you want to ha conduct your little science experiments. Maybe not the best idea in the world when it keeps backfiring consistently every single time. You'd have thought they'd learned by now, but they clearly haven't. And they clearly will continue to not learn because there's like 20 more alien movies. That honestly, I kind of want to watch. For as much as this game has annoyed me with mainly the second half, the first half was, was amazing. It's just the second half that's killed me. So as, or as much as the game has gotten under my skin, the one thing it has done is made me want to A, rewatch Alien, and B, watch all the other alien well at least watch aliens I, I don't know i've heard not great things about 
literally every other alien movie except for Romulus, the most recent one. Obviously, I, I think I think actually a huge reason why this game's even getting a sequel is because Alien Romulus did so well in theaters. Oh, is this it? Oh, is this it? She's finally gonna get to to hear her mom's message, right? report personal message this is for my daughter hi Amanda I'm recording this for you my sweetheart and I hope you get to hear it one day you see I um I got into trouble um my ship there was an accident sweetheart and um we found an alien creature. It was very dangerous. And the only way we could stop it was to destroy the ship. Uh, I'm okay. I'm stuck on this lifeboat, long way out. But we had to destroy the ship. We had to destroy the Nostromo. We just couldn't risk bringing that thing home with us. I needed to protect you. <laughs> well. Don't worry. Don't worry about me. I'm sure I'll see you very soon. I love you, sweetheart. Well, looky who we have here. Now you understand. Reactor. That'll turn the reactor into a goddamn nuke. You'll destroy the ship and the station. If annihilate every trace of that creature. Ripley, it's the only way. I can't let it live. And I'm not letting the company have it, or they'll just start the whole thing over again. Listen to me! We don't have to do this! Stop! Stop it, Mother! Marlo, please. You heard what your mother did. She understood. If she was here, she'd be helping me. You think she would want company suits done to zip code of that creature? No one must know. Exactly. Oh, here, right here. Gotta be honest, I was kind of expecting that that message would hit me a little harder than it did. It was kind of underwhelming. Because I was always spent the whole game building up to, like, the whole reason Ripley's here at all. Okay. You're doing good, Taylor. Now switch the maintenance terminal from auto to manual. Do you see it? It'll be there, Taylor. Trust me. That's it. The whole reason Ripley's even here right now is because she was, she was trying to find, to get closure for what happened to her mom in the first movie. And then we had that scene pretty early on where we found the, the flight recorder, but it was destroyed. And so the whole emotional hook was Ripley getting that closure. And it kind of felt underwhelming given that was the whole big... Okay, uh, apparently you have zero room for error. I took like a, a second to talk and that got us killed.
All right. In any case, surely this is... Surely now we finally, we've got to be closing in on the end, right? Because that's the big... You always save the big emotional hook. You, you, you always wait until the end of the game or the end of the story to resolve that because that's the thing people care about most. So surely by now... The ship's gonna tear itself apart! Warning. Critical command. Warning. Critical command. Taylor, I'm sorry to say I did- Oh my- Okay, that was kind of funny, actually. No, that was kind of funny. I just turned around, and all of a sudden, she was getting yeeted into the glass like a ragdoll. That was actually- that was pretty funny. I gotta be honest, that was pretty goddamn funny. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, this would be a real bad time for the Xenomorph to show up, just so you know. In case, in case it was, it was getting any funny ideas. Oh. Cutscene time. Whoa! I... Ripley's hands didn't actually touch the wall there. Something that probably would have been less obvious if I wasn't playing in VR. Let's hope there's no more facehuggers in this room. Thankfully there were not. Run, run, run. Running around at the speed of sound. And leave! Okay, faster, Ripley! No. Oh. This guy is climactic. Oh my god, what the... Find a way to contact the Torrens. Sure. The broadcast from the lane just updated. Hello, Sebastopol. Can you respond? We just saw a ship blow on your starboard side, took out an entire orbital stabilizer array. We have no place to dock. Please, tell us what's going on in there. We, we can take survivors. I'll leave this channel open. Torrens out. Oh yeah, the, the per we left someone behind in the Torrens. Are they just totally unaware of what's been going on this whole time? Because like we, we we left we left her behind. And said you'll hear from us uh, soon or whatever. And I don't think we ever actually contacted them again after that point. So they're just totally blissfully unaware of all the. Unfortunately, it seems that my only way through is taking me past the humans, but also on the on the tier list of like enemies I have to deal with in this game, it's Xenomorph all the way at the top. Obviously Xenomorph is, is the best. And then a, a, a pretty good distance away from that would be the, the humans. And then way, way, way below them. Like on subterranean tier, on, on, on subterranean tier would be the androids. They're not even in the same dimension. The humans... The humans feel much more manageable because they also feel alive and like that they react and they spot... Shh. What was that? Like that, for instance. They're like, oh hey, did I hear something? I don't know if I heard something there. It feels like, I think I might have heard something, but they're not sure. Yeah. So it feels like more natural reactions to things. Whereas the androids are like, oh, I spotted one pixel that was uh, that was astray. One lone pixel didn't match my didn't match my system's blueprint. Therefore, there must Ripley must be here. Time to go on the hunt and never ever let up. Whereas these guys are like, oh, did I hear something? I think I might have heard something. And then they'll check, but they're like they don't immediately know exactly where you are because of course they wouldn't. So 
Yeah, the humans are much more man. Oh, and also, the humans die. Like, you know, they don't take a bajillion. I mean, they, they're still kind of spongy, but not anywhere near to the same degree as the as the androids. And now we are. Whoa! I hear that. Now we are fully immersed into the idea of just looping back through all the places that we've been to before. Okay, are you a friend? I'm going to assume no. Always assume no- always assume no friend. Unless I have to. Oh, I have to go this way. Alright. Do 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 do. You okay? Listen. Oh, okay. Oh, hi. I didn't realize it was you. If we have the coordinates for the torrents, we could align the transmitter dishes manually, bypass Apollo completely. There's an observatory near the Shit! Right? I- yeah. I turned off my headset. I, I- I accidentally turned off my fucking headset. Is that gonna break the game? I hope it doesn't break the game. I actually accidentally turned on my headset. Holy shit. I- I was trying to adjust- Are we in? Are we good? Okay, we're cool. I- I was trying to adjust my headset, I accidentally bumped the power button. Thankfully, it seems like the game's smart enough to, you know, not- Shit itself if it loses contact with the headset for a brief moment, although I probably do need to resync. Yeah, I definitely needed to resync after that. Alright, so maybe the alien wasn't gonna be as omnipresent of a threat as I thought. I kind of thought that once we found the nest and then after the army got unleashed, that's like the moment in Halo Reach where you blow up one of the super carriers and you like you spend you spend the whole game just or you, you spend a decent amount of time, I should say. You spend the first like that that's that's a whole hour-long mission is dealing is trying to figure out a way to blow up just the one super carrier. And then you do it and you feel amazing. Well, maybe not amazing, because it does cost your team significantly to do it. But you feel you feel a, a bittersweet sense of satisfaction blowing up the super carrier. It's like, okay, we lost someone, but you know what? We did it for the for the betterment of reach, and you feel you feel good about it overall. And then Im almost immediately afterwards, they cut to a shot of a million of those super carriers. Those very same super carriers that you just- Oh, not this section. Oh, I remember this part. This part sucks. I hated this room. This is the first- This whole area was my first tango with the dumbass androids when I first started to realize how shit they were. Anyway, yeah. It's kind of like that where a, a million of those very same super carriers that you just spent an hour trying to destroy come out of slip space. And then you're like, oh shit, we're- we're actually screwed now. Because there's no way we can possibly take out all of them at once. And that's kind of the same thing that I Take the vessel up then. Keep on it. That ship's out there waiting for us. Apollo won't let me in. Try your codes again. Okay. Okay. I can't believe you left me alone back there. It's kind of the same thing in this game. Like I I at least I thought. I thought when we saw the army of xenomorphs crawling, like being unleashed into the ship. That, that was like, oh, now we have an army of them to contend with. But no, it's still just the one Xeno- I mean, maybe that'll happen later, but for now, it's still just the one Xenomorph that keeps stalking us. Ah, shit, this way's a dead end. Um, unless maybe I can plasma torch my way through it? Ah! Ion torch. It's still mostly just been human and android stuff. Which... Eh, have set my piece on it. I don't feel the need to keep beating a dead horse. For now, we're just gonna focus on getting ourselves to the torrents, because I I feel like, again, you always save your emotional hook for the as the, the final payoff. It's why in Halo Infinite, even after you defeat Eshram, you still don't know what happened to Cortana, because they know that the big thing players want to know about is what happened to Cortana after Halo 5. So they don't they don't reveal the truth of that until the final cutscene of the game. So I would assume that we're closing in on, on some sort of a finale. One would hope, anyway. What is this? Match input? Uh... Oh, just... Oh, okay, you have to, like, you have to hold it down. And then lock it in. I was just pushing the keys. Oh, it's... That's interesting. It sealed itself off. Hmm. That's not a good sign. Why did they do that? That's concerning. I don't want to be locked in this room. What? Oh, uh. That looks good. Okay, I did it. 
Oh, oh my god, we're moving. That would be why we're locked in here. Space is so fucking cool, dude. Oh, this again. I feel like you just have to wait until it gets like close enough so where you can accurately judge. Mm, that looks good. Nailed it. Thank God. Ricardo. Oh, and back down we go. Now you've got to align the dishes to the Tommen's position manually. Jack, I'm going outside. Oh, don't do that. Oh no. Oh, don't go outside. Oh, that's that sounds like a terrible idea. That sounds like your worst idea yet, actually. Going outside? Hmm. Why not just- why not just die? Like, why not just commit die now? If you're gonna- can I not- can I leave? Can I get off the, the- can I get down the- I would like to leave if that- if that's cool, if I'm allowed to leave the- this room. Is this one of those things where there's one exact specific angle? from which the game will allow you- yep, that's exact- there's one- there's one very specific angle at which the game will let you go down, and you just- it's just got a, a game of finding that angle. Ah, 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 right there, got it. That's annoying, but that- that I can- I am 100% positive would be alleviated in non-VR mode. Uh, this way is the way we go, it's the only way to go. I think the humans are still chilling over there. I can unlock the entrance to the airlock from here. Give me a sec. No humans. There, got it. Well, I mean, it, it, it's not the most dangerous thing we've done today, I guess. We've already done way more outlandish things than just going outside, so why not? What could possibly go wrong? Uh -huh. A lot of things, actually. All right, spacesuit time. Gimme. Give Gimme Give the spacesuit. Give me the spacesuit. Let's hope I can still save after. I, I just I didn't want to have to put on the spacesuit again after uh, loading back in every time. I'd like to save after putting this on, so hopefully I still can. Hopefully it doesn't immediately take me outside. Nope, we're good. We can still save. Saving. Saving. Alright, let's go. Oh, but I can't use my motion tracker anymore. Hmm. Well, hopefully we won't need to. I mean, the thing is, I can't use my weapons either. So, I feel like we're probably as safe as... As safe as one can realistically be. As if hell hasn't already broken loose, my dude. Are you, are you aware of what's been happening over the course of this game? Not entirely sure that you are. I think you might have uh, forgotten some of the key events that we've had to endure. I do like this, though. Love. I was hoping, because you never really get a, a good... You always get small peaks of outer space when you're inside the Sebastopol, but never... Never, you never really get a good sense of it because you're always in those corridors all the time. So I'm glad we are finally going outside and really allowing, allowing us a chance to really soak in the atmosphere, even if it is very transparently a skybox when you're in a VR headset. Uh, it really is a shame that the, that it's just that, really, it's because I mean, like I've, I was fine with the. This, this episode. This episode's been totally fine so far. I do, I do feel the game has kind of overstated its welcome a little bit. But that's mainly, that's not really because of anything this particular part of the game has done wrong. It's mainly just, it's just that middle section. Like immediately after the halfway point, when we started dealing with nothing but androids, was when that, that, that just needed to be, if not cut, then severely reduced. Because that, that completely killed the pacing. And also killed my immersion and my Joy? I don't know. That, that's really the bulk of the issue here. It's just way too long fighting nothing but ceaseless arrays of stupid androids. Punching the coordinates at the terminal. Terminal. 
down there somewhere, I assume. I saw no terminal up here. Two dish maintenance away. I'm just saying, if the alien wanted a free win, I, I, I couldn't possibly be more vulnerable than I am right now. One knock from that thing and I'm getting launched into outer space, never to be seen again. I have no weapons, I have no motion tracker, I am at my most vulnerable. Also, I have no light, so I can't see anything. Yeah, this would be, and also, not to mention, my field of view is severely limited because of the, the claustrophobic helmet I have on. Okay. Did I, did I do it? Did I win? Nirvana? Has my time come? Unlock emergency clamp. Do I gotta hit all these? Or just that one? Oh wow, I have to hit all of these? Alright, fine. Fine. Now I should be able to hit the big one. This is gonna take mouse and keyboard, bloop, and bloop. Alright, that seems like a win. The satellite dish is turning. So that seems like a win. We're ready to go home. This would be when the alien would attack, by the way. On the return trip home. They make you feel nice and safe on your trip out to this to the satellite dish. And then once you once you've already registered this catwalk as a safe space in your head, that's when they get you. That's when they flip the script and throw the xenomorph at you. I don't know, I don't know where it would come from. It's probably still dicking around inside. It loves it loves the the tight spaces of the Sevastopol and all the fresh meat it can find in there too much. But I just have a feeling. Just have a feeling. Aha! Input towards coordinates. Boy, was I supposed to remember them? Oh shit. Uh 35 oh oh it just tells you right <laughs> never mind you don't have to remember anything it literally just tells you also i'm gonna go cross-eyed staring at this without closeness to my screen 75 Bloop. all right that's it right that's mission complete that feels like mission complete I'm waiting for the i'm waiting for the xenomorph to climb over the catwalks any second now any second now. Torrance, Torrance, this is Ripley on the station. Are you reading me, Verlaine? Ripley, what the hell is going on over there? Long story. Bad things, Torrance. There's an alien organism here. It's deadly. We need urgent extraction. There's multiple alien organisms here, Ripley. There's no time to explain. Please, Verlaine. There's nowhere for us to dock, Ripley. The station's tearing free from its gravity mooring. I've seen a towing platform below the space flight terminal, but the Torrens umbilical isn't built for it. You'll need to extend the tow platform clamp station side. Just get into position. And so the laundry list continues to grow. But th th this does feel like endgame material now, where we're actually making significant steps to get off the ship. Even if the steps keep changing and expanding, we are making progress. So this 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 definitely feels like endgame material. Where we've we finally had enough of the alien, and now we're just focused on getting the hell off this place. I hear those noises? Those are bad noises. I mean, it, like this, it feels like a prime opportunity for them to throw the alien at you, but also it'd be totally bullshit if they did because I literally have no means of defending myself. So. I, realistically, I think we're probably safe, but also you never know because it's alien isolation. The alien could strike wherever, whenever, as I keep saying ad nauseum, and then you're probably sick of hearing by now. So you really, unless it's, unless you've literally thrown it off the ship and have nothing to face off against except androids for three hours, you, you, you never can say for sure where it'll come from or how safe you are, if you're even safe at all, which most of the time you're probably not. But this time I think we probably are. I think we could have maybe made the catwalk like a little bit shorter. Even just a smidge. Oh well. Yeah, it's fine. Get me out of the suit. So they also usually they put a save station before a section before where it's possible for you to die horribly. But I don't even know if it would be possible for me to have died out there. Either way I'll save, because I, I don't want to have to 
redo all that again, that would be immensely painful, monotonous, and, well, I already used the word painful, but I feel like it's worth saying again, just to get the point home. Painful! Sounds like Ricardo, uh, might have met something of an untimely demise. Now, at the hands of the alien or the humans remains to be seen. Can't say for sure. Uh, well. Mystery solved. Okay, it's not going, it's not going this way. That's good. But that, but it is going the way we need to go, right? That's not great for me. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna... Before I, before I activate this... That might not have gone where I wanted it to go. I think I might have accidentally thrown that exactly where I need to go. Alright, what if I threw one back that way? That... That did not help me at all. Okay, it's distracted for now. See, this is this is the payoff for me not using flares throughout the rest of the. Oh shit! Take another flare, please. Did it take the bait? Come on, take the bait. Take the bait, please. Why are you just standing there like a Muppet? Go to the flare. Either go to the flare or go to the asshole over there. What if I... Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. You can do this. Well, not if you run up to me. Not if you run up to me! Oh, for... Asshole! Well, I got your welcome, by the way. Man, I wanted to do that stealthily. That we that would have been a clean run were it not for D Jimbo over there. Big brain, 200 IQ play, just run right toward me. We would have had that in the bag were it not for Jimbo over there. I don't even know what his name is. His name's Jimbo, I don't care. We're calling him Jimbo. Ooh. I make no noises. I make no noises, but I do save. <sighs> See, this is the payoff for me not using flares for the rest of the game. Because I think if I had used them too consistently, it might have learned. The same way it's grown immune to the flamethrower, it might have eventually been like, wait a minute. Every, the last few times I've gone to this flare, it didn't yield me anything useful. It might have learned that it was just a trick and it would have stopped me. I think it probably would have been less effective the longer the game went on for. So, this is where it all pays off, because because it is, it's, it hasn't built up an immunity to the flares, it means I had free reign to use more of them in, uh, in that section right there. And see, that was like a million times more tense. It's in the vents. It's in the, I can hear it. I can hear it's in the vents. Than any of the any no not any every single other one of the android encounters combined. Ricardo. Oh. Sur okay. Surprise! Third answer. It was the face hugger. I probably should have seen that coming actually, because it didn't make any noise. Oh, shit. It did. I I, I thought it. I thought- I, I figured it couldn't have been the alien because the alien makes a lot of noise. 
then I also figured that if it was a human, it probably also would have made a lot of noise because I would have heard the gunshot. So I should have realized that th that it was the secret third solution of the. Because I, I forgot. I keep forgetting. Face huggers are are here now. And this seems like a great place. Oh! Oh, come on. As you can see, the flamethrower is getting very much, very much less effective. Holy shit. That, it literally dropped down right on top of me. That, oh, that was the biggest heart skip, heartbeat skip moment of the entire game so far. Jesus Christ. It's seeming like Ripley's gonna end up being the sole survivor of this game. You know, sort of carrying on the family namesake. As what happened to her mother in the first movie. Did they ever meet? I assume, I feel like I would probably have heard about it if, if Amanda Ripley was ever in any of the movies. I probably would have heard about that by now. Although I do, I do think, I, I do remember uh, reading on Twitter, it's not called, I'm never calling it X, that there might be some references to alien isolation in the new movie, Romulus. Which, that's pretty cool. That they... That was so fucking lucky, holy shit. Now, is it gonna drop down on my head again like it did last time? I sure hope not. Okay, let me put on the flashlight. I'm just gonna hope that, it, that it's not triggered. I feel like it's more triggered by sound than it is light. Not liking that music. Okay, this, this is where it happened last time, right? The music needs to not. Okay. I don't think it's concerned with me. Because I, I heard the sound of human screams. Okay, new... New safe station. Yeah, 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 hostel's nearby, whatever. Unless it's, like, unless it's like literally on the stairs, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. As long as it's not literally on the stairs. Yeah, but sometimes what you'll get with, uh... With multi- a, a fucking course! Bursts of the flamethrower does it take against you now? Uh, apparently I should have done a better job balancing my resources. Because now it's immune. I feel like- it, is it just straight up immune to this thing now? I'm thinking maybe yes. I, I'm thinking it, it might actually just be straight up immune. Like. What the hell? Okay, you know what? New plan. Remember the thing the game said is like strike a wall with a maintenance jack? Let's try that. There. Okay. That was that was the beginning of a plan. Then get the flare out. And throw it down that way. Are you fucking serious? Of course. Stopped right by the goddamn door. Chase it. Chase it, you won't. Oh, you will. Thank you. Now go, 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 go. Ooh, desperate times call for dust. Oh, fuck off, really? Please don't be. The fuck is moving <gasps> out there. Kill him instead! Yeah, shoot, why don't. Oh. Really? Okay, new plan. Step one, med kit. Step two, strike, strike the floor. Did it not hear that? Did it, did it just not? Did I get lucky? I think I got lucky this time. Now, Molotov could be good. Let's use a Molotov, because it, it's good for crowd control. Unless they're just not gonna be here this time. I guess they're just not here this time. 
Okay. Alright, we're cool. Let's take the lower route. Unless, wait, is this... Oh, never mind, I can't take the lower route. There's no, stair There's no stairwell out of there. Now this is Alien Isolation. This is... This is when the game throws everything it has at you at once. It's the alien mixed with human combat. Or non-alien combat, I guess is the better term. Humans or androids. Preferably humans. Is there a staircase? Okay, there's a staircase down this way. You know there's humans here. We saw them. I like how- Where did they go? There was a squad of three of them that appeared out of nowhere last time. Now there's just no one. There's just actually no one. I mean, I'll take it, I guess, but... Oh, fucking really, dude? Fine. Alright. I guess the flares aren't working now, either. Does it maintain memory between save files? That screen gives me the impression that it just spawned... Did it spawn in the section with these guys? And kill them for me? See, this is what I'm talking about. Oh my god. See, like, I don't... I don't understand this game. In the last section, I unloaded a million bajillion rounds of flamethrower into that alien and nothing happened to it. This time, I hit it once, and it left immediately. So, looks like I gotta get back. Okay. Yep, that's right. Pay me no mind. Just focus on them. I'm not here. Pay them no pay me no mind. Worry about the other humans. I'm just chilling. I'm just going for a nice stroll. Don't worry about me. I'm good. Oh, I remember this. It's one of the first places we went to, like I said uh, previously with the whole trial by fire for the androids thing. Oh my god, what a hellish little section. What a nasty little section that was, oh my god. And again, I didn't win because of my anything I did specifically. I won because I got lucky. I, like, it, it really, a lot of this game feels like it comes down to, did you get lucky with where the alien spawns, or did you not? Like, did you luck out and the alien spawned, uh, why are you pointing me this way? I guess I must have taken the wrong terminal or something. Did you luck out and the alien drop? Like, because in that room there were like three humans and then there was a vent above the humans where the alien spit was dripping out of. Are you going to get lucky and have the alien come out of that hole and kill all the humans for you? Or are you going to get unlucky and you're going to just waltz right into a, t a team of three humans that are just waddling down the stairs for some reason? And like, I was so proud of that. We use the, the trick we learned earlier where you can whack a wall and it'll draw people to you and then we use that in combination with a flare to get past the alien. And then just three humans spawned in out of nowhere. Like, why? Like, the fact that the, the alien is so unpredictable keeps you on your toes. And for most of the game, that works fine. There's nothing wrong with that and it works to the game's benefit. Because there's, like, if the alien drops in on you in a room, nine times out of ten, there's there's a way for you to survive. You're not completely screwed. But oh really? How'd you like to taste of Molotov? Someone out there? I saw that.
We have come too far to lose now. Come way too far to be screwed over right at the end, right next to a save station. Patience has won before and it shall win again. It'll get bored eventually. It always gets bored. It always gets bored. Just like that. Just like that. Patience is a virtue. Patience wins, bitch. Patience wins again. Oh my god. Holy sweet mother of tap dancing Jesus. My god, what a stressful way to end this episode. Okay. okay we're gonna leave things right there for now. Yeah, like nine times out of ten, like right there for instance. When the alien drops in, you're not out of luck. There are ways you can survive. Patience will win out in the end. There's ways that you can, you can win. Even without resorting to the flamethrower. But that section just felt like... No matter what I did, like, I was getting screwed over by someone beyond my control. Like, oh, the alien happened to be right in front of me. And it also really doesn't help that the flamethrower is very inconsistent with how many bursts it takes to kill him or to make him run away. That's really, really annoying. Because, like, I thought, I, I would be willing to accept it if it was as simple as the more you use it on him, the less effective it becomes. Because that makes sense of what the alien's supposed to be, right? Like, it learns your tactics, it adapts to them, and it becomes resilient to them. But it's clearly not that, because sometimes one, even like, this late in the game, back to back, it was one burst is enough to kill him, or kill it, or t send it away, and then immediately afterwards, it's not enough, or vice versa, and it's... It just doesn't, it doesn't feel satisfying when that stuff happens. And again, and that, I, I hated that hallway in the beginning of the game when it was just the, the androids too. I do, I do like that it, we, like, it, there's something to be said about how making you go through it once with less, less hostile enemies prepares you for later sections when you return to them with more hostile enemies, kind of like what they do with the Lizard King boss in Dragons of 3D, where you, you run through the level once with no boss and no falling objects, and then when you do the chase sequence through that same level, you're already familiar with the layout, so you can kind of anticipate the traps and you you kind of already know the ropes. But even, even knowledge of that section of the game didn't really help, because it's just, there's so, there's nowhere to run, there's no escape, there's nowhere to escape. Some ways just lead to dead ends, so there's not really many options. You don't really have, like, here I had, I had cover, it's an open space, I had cover, I had options to my, I could use at my disposal to put distance between myself and the, and the Xenomorph, but there's nothing you can really do there, especially if you just round a corner and there happens to be a, a human right there with a shotgun to the face, or there, or three of them coming up the stairs for some reason. Well, I guess that was one way to end the video. But I, I it really feels like we have to be closing in on a climax now. We have to be, like, right at the end of the game. Anyway, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time. I hope to catch you all tomorrow for some more Alien Isolation. Goodbye.